How do you know if someone's vegan? They'll tell you, unless of course you're in Canada, then the government will tell you. So there's a new bill, not a lot of people are talking about this, but apparently if it passes, well, they may be turning us all vegan. I'm not sure how this all works, but let's get into this. And today, uh, we're talking about this viral tweet that went out, the food professor saying, if this passes, the vagueness of the bill C-293 could grant public health authorities the power to shut down Canada's entire livestock sector. That's a scary thought, is it not? So today I have Dr. Sylvain Charlebois on the show to talk about exactly this. What is this bill? <laughs> I, I tried looking into this. It's crazy. Yeah. I, the legal, you look into it. I, I'm not a legal scholar, so I don't know what it's saying. What are they trying to even do with this bill? Yeah, well, I'm not a legal scholar uh, as well, but I... I study policy, so it's it's so it's a it's a language that I that I'm familiar with. So I do read a lot of bills. I testified before Parliament in Ottawa twenty two times. Twenty uh, my twenty third time will be next week, actually, in, in Ottawa, and I'm always uh, asked to comment about uh, bills uh, like these. And uh, but I'm more specific about certain section of the bill. I don't comment on the entire thing. I just try to focus on a few things that need to be addressed by either MPs or at Senate. Now, this particular bill has flown under. Uh, the parliamentary radar for years. It was actually presented as a private member's bill. Uh, and typically those bills get squashed after the first reading in parliament. Right. So it was, it was presented by uh, a liberal MP in Ontario who happens to be a vegan. And in October, 2022, he did present this bill and it actually went through parliament, three readings, and it now entered it went to Senate in June of this year, and it passed the first reading. So we're into the second reading of the Senate. And then by that, once you reach uh, that level, it means you're pretty, you're close to becoming law. So a couple of weeks ago, I had some uh, good friends from uh, the prairies uh, sending me a note and asking me, what do I think about Bill C-293? And I said, what bill? C293. Exactly. I mean, like who's talking about this? Nobody's even discussing it. In Parliament, this. so I mean, uh, before people bash the media, there are 45 active bills in Parliament right now. So it's a busy place. I mean, it's hard to, to keep track. And right now, there's a lot of focus on bills that parties want to focus on. Like the block right now is focusing on uh, on the supply management bill 282 and, and 3019, mm -hmm. which is the uh, pension uh, bill. So it, it Sometimes bills do get politicized and sometimes they don't. This one actually did not get politicized at all, but it is about pandemic preparedness. And this okay. is what got me real nervous when I started reading that <laughs> pandemic preparedness. Well, well, it depends on who's talking about preparedness. I know. This I know. Yeah. It's not my area. I'm not a public health expert. And, uh, but oh, no, I'm just saying what, what they did to us during the pandemic. I don't know if I want any more of that or touching any other sectors. Listen, I, I, I know. I know it's been difficult for everyone. And uh, we're not sure if you want to give more authority to governments at this point. But still, it's hard to be against a government wanting to prepare. I mean, let's face it. I, I think it's okay. Let's let's accept this, uh, Clyde, that it's mm -hmm. okay for a government to prepare for looming risks. So I can That's kind of how I read the the intent of the bill itself. Okay, because you have to understand the intent of a bill and the spirit of the bill. The intent of the bill is to prepare, is to allow governments to prepare for the next pandemic. Mm -hmm. The spirit of the bill is way beyond that. It, the scope is huge and vague. Oh, my goodness. I was reading it. Oh, my God. They can do anything with that bill. Anything. Now, my section, Section L, has to do with the agri-food sector. And that's when I really got concerned because that's where you can actually – really feel the spirit of the bill. So in that section, it mentions 
that we need to de-risk, and I'm using my own words, of course, I'm not rereading you the uh, the articles of, of Section L, but basically the, 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 the second item is mentioning that we need to de-risk animal production, okay? De-risk right. animal production. Item number three, to promote alternative proteins. Now, I don't know about you, Clyde, but when I read that, I'm going, oh my goodness, are we giving authority to the government to shut down all slaughterhouses, all livestock uh, farms, and focus more on vegetable protein? Is that what what's going on right now? Or other proteins. And I mean, this is this is living up to the meme. You know, you'll eat your bugs no criteria. You'll, you'll be in your pod. No objective. You'll be happy. No clarity in terms of what could trigger a shutdown or not. There's nothing, no details whatsoever. And so Clyde, when I read that section, I, I, I really, really became concerned because this bill basically can pick winners and losers within the agri-food sector. This right. is about pushing an agenda. And, and to me, that's not Canadian at all. I mean, it, what's Canadian is to actually provide choice and to help sectors. Are risks different? In the livestock sector, of course they are, but you want a government to support a livestock industry, not squash them. Because right, right now, Bill 293 can squash a good portion of the livestock industry. And uh, because using the pandemic as an excuse, basically, we can actually encourage um, or promote, that's the word in the bill, promote, uh, promote pro vegetable proteins, which is really, to me, a very, very dangerous, vague bill. Well, it's scary because, you know, the government's been putting, putting a lot of things before uh, the citizenry, not really telling people what they're doing. We saw, you know, in, in years past, a, a, a massive facility to make uh, protein from crickets. And and you know introduce that into the food supply. People You're talk about a spire in London, the largest cricket that, farm in the world. That, that's it's correct. Right yeah. here. <laughs> And, and but but until instead of telling people you're eating crickets, they give it vague but names and put it into. You can the, produce whatever protein you want, but here's here's the irony here. We actually gave a huge grant. The federal government gave a huge grant to build this facility, the largest farm cricket farm in the world. But all of that production goes to Korea, so we're actually subsidizing <laughs> protein production to feed Korea, and right. nobody's talking about that. Oh, I was not aware of that. That's 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 very interesting. You want to hear another one? Go ahead. <laughs> In Kingston, Ontario, okay, there's a new dairy processing facility called Canada Royal Mill. You can look it up. It's on Google. Canada I did see Royal the headlines. Mill. Yeah, exactly. We actually subsidized the construction of that plant, both federally, and Queens Park also did fund the building of that facility. I think subsidies are at around $50 million, okay? That plant is owned by China, okay? They'll be producing, they are producing now baby formula for the cane market, and they may export some of that in the U.S. eventually. But in light of what happened with China and canola a few years ago, and again this year with the probe against our pork and everything else, we're paying China to build a plant in our own backyard to feed ourselves that's the government we have right now unbelievable unbelievable so i mean people are obviously concerned about food security right now especially in a case where uh inflation is rampant in in our economy is is not doing so well so when people read that the government is is making uh steps strides in fact in in the direction of taking control of the food supply this this puts uh people this brings people's anxieties up tremendously so oh, yeah, absolutely what what, a, what does this really spell out at the end of the day if this bill passes um will the government then be able to uh you know under any circumstance where there's a uh, because uh, you know, pandemic can be very vague these days. They're they're even arguing that the 
um, that climate change can be used in, as in a sense as a type of pandemic situation mm. uh, in order to well, fix this is along about agendas. Clyde, this is this is what's the, that's the worst part. This is about pandemic preparation. Okay, this is not about managing a pandemic if it happens. It's about pandemic preparation, so it can actually happen at any time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah okay that well, makes there's a no lot window more you don't need a virus coming from somewhere to start let okay we need build 293 no, no we actually can implement all these things right away once uh enacted wow so what does this mean for the average farmer that's in animal proteins that does well, i've been receiving a lot of letters from farmers to be honest uh over the last couple of weeks because i i i kind of felt i needed to do something i, I need to make this news uh, and it did explode on social media, but mass media, uh, main me mainstream media is not picking up on it. It's not touching it. It's not touching 293 with a 10 foot pole. And I think I know why, because I, I do believe that, um, it it's, it's a bit tainted and that's why I think 293 was brilliantly designed. Because they put pandemic preparedness saying, well, who's against preparing for a pandemic? And of course, uh, people out West, a lot of people who were part of the convoy, for example, uh, are tainted as radicals. And they're the ones that have been actually voicing their concerns. So people are saying, well, or media uh, is saying, well, if those guys are having a problem with 293, maybe it's okay. But they're not, they're not. They're not bothering to actually read. And that's why I've been posting. Just, just read the bill. Just, just read it. I actually put the link and I actually cut and paste the section and highlighted some section, the wording, the actual wording in the bill on X. And uh, it's not picking up. Uh, I know that I'm actually, you know, I have spoken to a few people, key folks. Uh, the can meet council finally send out a note to their members saying we're concerned about the language but we don't think it's going to pass uh there's probably going to be an election anyways who cares so i met with them i met with the cmc and cmc is a great group it's it's not but i would say they're not keen in in being in the spotlight between you and i they don't like to be in a the spotlight they do the work behind the scenes but I did meet them and I said, listen, you, I, I, this, I think you're a little too optimistic here. Uh, I, you know, don't bank on the fact that we'll have an election this fall. It, we could actually have to wait and this could actually become law before then. Now, industry, what's really funny, Clyde, is that industry believes that it's unconstitutional, unconst which is Probably, yeah. I mean, when you look at it, it's, pro it's, well, it's probably, probably accurate. Yeah, it's probably accurate. So they're accurate. saying, well, let, well let, let's let, let, let the government actually vote on this. I mean, if there's a change in government, we're probably going to change it anyways. And if, and if the government is not changing, we'll just, we'll just sue the government. And that's it. I think that's the attitude right now out there. Well, that's a piss poor attitude, in my opinion. I know, but, I know. It's a lot of and, problems, a lot of money. And I don't, I don't see an election coming well, anytime Well, if you, you want to go into the cattle business... Let's say you're young, like 30 year old, you got some money, you want to become a cattle rancher. Would you really with that? With that risk, the of risk. Course. Yeah, that's unbelievable. That, all of these things. I mean, I can think about, you know, carbon taxing. I can think about how uh, the government is managing labor disputes within the cane supply chain, uh, waiting until the very end to act on it. I mean, I don't think they understand the cost of uncertainty in business. That's really what's going on. A lot of people out there are operating their business without knowing what the heck our rules going to be tomorrow. Well, that's really, uh, in my opinion, the, the whole hold on our economy. Uh, a lot of investors are looking to wait until Trudeau is no longer in office. It looks like that's going to be the inevitability, but we just don't know when that might happen. Dr. Sylvain Charlebois, thank you so much for joining me today. And uh, we'll have you again, of course. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to the new publication that's coming out in uh, could be any uh, moment now. So uh, we'll keep an eye out for that. Everyone, links, as always, are in the description down below. Go check them all out. Thank you for joining me.